When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? If you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? This is heavy duty, Doc. This is great. Uh, does it run like on, on regular unleaded gasoline? No, it requires something with a little more kick. Hi, I'm, I'm Russ from Evolution. This is Jack. Welcome to our DeLorean electric conversion project. So this car's literally just come into us in the last couple of days. Uh, it's gone through the planning process, which we do with all of our vehicles. Um, and we're pretty much there in terms of uh, how we're gonna convert this to electric, together with the timeline and the costs and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're not aware, obviously, the way we work things here is we start with the requirements and we build each of the cars bespoke to the customer's needs. Uh, so obviously this is the, the car of the star in this particular case. And, um, you know, obviously the, the intro was um, pretty sexy as we, we all enjoyed making it. So what we want to do is quickly just go through the, the build of the car and how we're going to approach it, get into the, some of the details. And uh, before we go any further, obviously like and su subscribe uh, and follow us on Facebook to see even more exciting projects like this. So let's, without further ado, let's go through what we've kind of decided we're going to do with this, I guess, really. Do you want to take the lead? So this is an iconic car, as everyone knows. It's, um, it, it's a celebrity in its own, in its own uh, regard. Mm. Uh, and this car is actually ideal for an electric conversion. Um, the customer is uh, pretty excited about it, and um, he's doing the, the right thing, as far as I'm concerned, as yep. far as modernizing it and making it a, a, a car that's going to be drivable for a long time yeah. um, with uh, Tesla parts and uh, Tesla motors. So it's going to be one of the very few in the world that's had this treatment done to it. Yeah. So the, 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 the key here is it's, it's Tesla um, uh, powertrain, a drivetrain, a uh, small drive unit which will go in the back and then also uh, Tesla uh, packs as well. So Tesla, Tesla batteries. And Jack is right in saying it's, it's the perfect solution or the perfect fit for this particular car. It's a rear-engined uh, transaxle uh, car uh, and the small drive unit from Tesla should fit perfectly if all the scans are true. So, so requirements change along the way. Um, it's been done so few times around the world yeah. that uh, things may change. Um, availability of parts is one thing. Uh, the Australian engineering requirements are also quite unique in Melbourne. So, uh, you know, we expect uh, a bit of uh, adjustment along the way as far as the plans are concerned. Yeah, but that's part of the journey, part of the enjoyment, both for us and the customer ultimately. So let's have a walk through. Pretty basic motor, um, asthmatic some might say when it was developed in 1982 it was pretty old school even by then, by those standards. So uh, I think it's only developing about 130 brake horsepower. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is in kilowatts. I'm sure we'll put it on the screen somewhere like there or, or there. Anyway, so the Tesla drive unit should fit in here quite nicely. Uh, there's obviously a fair amount of modification required to make it fit, but it's nothing that we haven't done before on other vehicles. But we accept the challenge, obviously. We're looking at putting a total of eight Tesla modules in here, four in the front, four in the rear. Uh, and the small drive unit will take the power up to about 350 kilowatts. So pretty punchy. And of course, uh, maximum torque from zero RPM. So we're looking at, it will be a pretty quick car, probably not to 100 and around the five or six second mark. Uh, for the purists amongst you, uh, there's really no, there'll be no love, love, love lost for this engine at all whatsoever. Uh, it's ready to come out, it's served its time, and um, it'll go on to obviously be a coffee table somewhere. So that's, that's the rear, and it'll be obviously be a lot cleaner. And we'll come round and have a look inside. Um, so in here, it's, um, it was probably quite modern for the 80s, but now it's getting pretty dated. That said, we, we don't, really don't want to change any, any aesthetics. Uh, so there won't be any Doc Martin style dials on, in here or flux capacitors or anything like that. We'll keep it as standard as possible. Um, all, the redial, all the dials will be, will be repurposed accordingly. So the fuel gauge will be the electron gauge. 
uh, and the RPM will be for the motor RPM as well um, and so on and so forth. We're also going to have a head unit in here, uh, Android, which will show range to zero for the car. So just like modern OEM vehicles, you'll have those kind of modern conveniences along with charge timer. Uh, and heating, remote heating control, etc. Uh, the seats will be remained, we probably will be recovering them in the leather uh, and also uh, fitting them with heated seats. So, as those that you already have drive electric cars know, heated seats consume a lot less, less power than a, a standard HVAC system within a car. So, we typically fit heated seats to every vehicle that we convert. But let's go and have a look up front and to see what's, uh, what space we've got up, up there. So, here we are at the front of the vehicle, the front fruit depending on what you call it and wherever you are in the world. Some may be tempted to put all of the batteries up the front, but we want to, want to actually achieve 50-50 weight distribution. At the moment, the vehicle doesn't handle particularly well because all the weight's at the rear, there's nothing up here at all. Uh, and we don't want to make it worse by putting then putting all the weight at the front. That would just be craziness, right? Um, so there's, there's heaps of room here. Um, if we have a look underneath, the mat, you can see you've got a spare tire, which isn't particularly useful. Um, and what we're planning to do is to remove most of this uh, floor work here and mount the batteries really, really, uh, really down low. Uh, and that means we can drop this down, reupholster re if need be, and then you've got full use of the fruit once the vehicle has been converted. And really, apart from the charge port, you wouldn't know anything's changed up here. So that's pretty, that's pretty much it, guys. So. Stay tuned, like I said, like and subscribe. There'll be more episodes coming, uh, coming through as we work through the project. It's gonna be incredibly exciting. We'll film as much as we can for you uh, and keep you updated. Uh, so look, any, any questions, ask below. And if you're looking to convert your own DeLorean or any other vehicle, hit us up and we'll do all we can to help you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of this, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and also check out our sponsors who make all this possible without them we wouldn't be here doing this many thanks see you soon